Buenos dias, soy Jesse Ortega, y soy el arquitecto o chief engineer for battery electric vehicles here at General Motors. I have responsibility for the current Chevy Volt and Chevy Bolt as well, as, as well as some other variants of those vehicles which we're working on, which we're not ready to disclose. As we've taken a look at developing the electric vehicles, we've got decades of experience. In fact, if you think about it, our lunar lander, we, we have a rover that went to the moon that was also a General Motors electric vehicle. So since 1968, we've been looking at, 69, excuse me, we've been looking at electric vehicles. We did an EV1 to learn as a concept, and then we launched a production E-Rev variant of an electric vehicle, which was the Chevy Volt, and I say this because this is a Volt with a V, um, and that vehicle launched in 2009. We did a generation one of that, and then we did a second generation, increasing the, the EV range of that vehicle, and then we used that technology and the learnings from that to create our own new Chevy Bolt, which you see sitting here behind me. We launched that a couple of years ago to great success. And what it's really done is it's paved the way for our all-electric future that we're headed to. We're committed to zero emissions in the future, and both the Bolt and the Bolt are stepping stones heading towards that. I think as we look at developing the electric vehicles, there's a lot of things from a technology standpoint that still need to continue to evolve. Certainly the, the power electronics and the drive electronics are moving very quickly. Motors are moving very quickly. Batteries, even though they're making great progress, still need a long way to go. But the bigger issue is just getting people to accept them more and more. As you take a look at an electric vehicle, there's still range anxiety. So you're seeing some manufacturers wanting to go to very large ranges, which necessarily drive a very large battery with large charge times so I think you know somewhere as we go and people become more and more familiar with them I'll give you an analogy my teenage daughter when, even when we get into the car she'll give me her phone and she'll say dad I need to charge my phone and I say well what what is it at she'll say 76 and I say well no that's good and she goes no no it's at 76 so there's people that still get nervous when they start to lose some of the range I think as they become more and more mainstream and be, people become familiar with that I think you're going to see the need for these very large batteries start to go down secondly the infrastructure for charging them as people start to get equated you know you have gas stations on every block sometimes two or three or four block so people are used to being able to go in and refill their vehicle Today, charging stations, even though they're becoming more and more common, we still need more of them so people can feel comfortable. But I think as you know, a driver of EVs and the people we've had, when they first get the vehicle, they do a lot of frequent charging, but over time you start to see that become less frequent because they become more comfortable with the range. You know, some of the key enablers that I think we're able to bring to the marketplace are, are a few. Number one is we do have a long history of developing electric vehicles. And there is a steep learning curve that comes with these because the component sets, you can treat them as a component set, but integrating them into a vehicle takes takes a lot of learnings. It's how do you control the torque as you're moving through? How do you do the regen? So there's a lot of things that we've done over 100 plus years that we know how to integrate vehicles very, very well. Second to that, we can scale up. We know how to scale very quickly in, in, in our space. A lot of these newer companies that are coming in, they're still learning through that. And then lastly, I would say that we have a very, very strong lead in our styling. Our styling, our physical integration of the components, as well as our further track on the learning curve, I think gives us an advantage. The two biggest comments that I get when we start getting people into the Chevy Bolt EV for the first time is, first of all, the immediate torque. Because even though it's, it's a, a B-segment vehicle and people are used to when you press the accelerator some amount of lag before then they get their acceleration and start moving. With the, with the electric motors that we have, we have torque right away. So as soon as you hit the pedal, you are moving very quickly. And then secondly, the other part that comes in very quickly is how quiet the vehicle is. It's amazing how when you don't hear exhaust, when you don't hear an engine revving up and down, how quiet the vehicle seems. Those are the two biggest differences that jump out. Yeah, I, I think you're starting to see a very good spread in the use of electric vehicle. So certainly a lot of the places that have started tend to be smaller where we're at. You're starting to see some of the high-end performance vehicles that are starting to be announced. We just announced Cadillac. It's gonna go with our with, with an EV future. So you're starting to see that as the technology develops and as the technology evolves, I think you'll see it cover a very, very wide range of the portfolio. And just like things in the past, there may be still people who wanna prefer a gasoline or a diesel engine, but I think as the benefits of, of EV come into play, more and more people will switch over to that. 
I, I, it's pretty neat. I've got engineering teams that are located in Korea. I've got engineering teams located in China. I've got engineering teams located uh, here in the United States across various uh, uh, campuses throughout the United States. So what we do is we do a lot of meetings that are through through the the web where we can look at each other's work, where we're talking through a lot of phone calls. And then I try to be in most of the regions at least once or twice a quarter. Because at the end of the day, and that's what one of the best parts about this type of job, is that as you go around the world, you really do start to see that people are people and everybody really is searching for the same good. And so when you can develop those personal relationships, I think that helps. And I think personally, you know, one of the things that's benefited me in my career is that as a Latino, that's our culture. Our culture is to be more family oriented, to be a we versus I type of people. So that has really helped. And I try to encourage that not only in myself, but in the people that work for me. What I try to do is I always try to pull out who knows the best about this. And I'll give you an example. Previous to this, I was the chief engineer on the Malibu, and we were building the Malibu in Korea, and we were having problems with the deck lit fit. And so we were in there, and the plant was concerned that the design wasn't robust, so they were raising issues with North American engineering. So I went in there and I said, well, who's the manufacturing engineer responsible for the deck lit fit? And it was a young engineer who raised his hand. And I said, well, you know what the answer is, right? And he said, I do. I said, so what's the answer? And he goes, we need to change these holes that we had. We need to trend them to another site. And I said, so why haven't you raised that? And, you know, his boss finally said, well, because we don't give him that opportunity. You know, no one's asked them. It's just their, it's just their culture, right? He wasn't going to raise his hand and said, no, everybody's wrong. But because now I was one of the senior people and I was asking him, he felt he could, he could speak to that. So there's some of that that you've got to, as a leader, try to break through. I was born in Mexico, I was born in San Luis Potosí, and uh, my parents divorced. My mother was from the United States and her parents, my grandparents, lived in California. So when, we do, when, when my parents divorced, we moved to California, so I grew up in California. And uh, growing up there, you know, I grew up in, in the 60s. And when, when Apollo started going to the moon, and Apollo landed on the moon, all of a sudden the school started teaching science, and they started teaching math. And it just blew me away as a little kid that someone could figure out how you can go to the moon. That someone, someone, that there was a way to do that. And I got turned on into math and science. And in this country, if you can do math and science, you're a genius. Doesn't matter if you can't spell. Doesn't matter if you got you know long hair. They don't care. But if you can do math and science, people are gonna are gonna give you the benefit of the doubt. So with that, I went. I got an engineering degree. I was blessed. Came to work for General Motors. 37 years ago, and the cool part of that whole story is on the last program I had, we were doing a new nine-speed transmission, uh, automatic transmission for the vehicle, and the lead plant, the plant that launched that, was in San Luis Potosí. So I had, I had the ability to go back to the hometown that I was born in and talk to the people that were building and engineering the transmission for us there and thank them for it. So it was a full circle. I, I don't think the car culture is in danger because it's more than just a car, right? It, we have more computers on some of these vehicles than, than computers themselves, right? We've got infotainment systems here that would rival an iPad, that would rival an iPhone. We've got connectivity through the, through, through the satellite. We've got autonomous vehicles that are learning to drive themselves. So it's a technology company. There's a lot of areas for it. And secondly, what I would say, has been an eye-opening to me is that it is a global product. So if you're a young engineer who's really interested in math and scientists, interested in technology, in this kind of industry, you could do everything some, to, from some very high power, electrical, computer science, algorithm, machine learning, all the way to, to you know, basic, you know, uh, metal assembly, plastic injection molding, anything you want, and you can do that globally. You can work in Brazil, you can work in China, you can work in Japan. It's, it, it gives you that opportunity. Yeah, I, you know, it's, it's changing so fast, and Mary Barra talks about that. You know, our CEO, she said that the auto industry is gonna change more in the last five years than it has in the last 50, and you know, and, and I see that. I see that myself, so who knows? I mean, we're certainly working on the autonomous vehicles, but there's other people, you know, ideally wouldn't it be cool if we could get to Star Trek where you could transport from one place to another and move around, and who knows?
Yeah. We have a lot of refinement that we do every year. We're always looking at where can we improve, and we're starting to get real customer feedback. So as real customers are starting to own this and, and the owner base starts to increase, we're doing that. But certainly we're looking at the next generation of electric vehicles based on this learning. We had an announcement here this last week that you know that a Cadillac's going to lead, be a lead vehicle off of that. So certainly those vehicles are coming. And until then, we're going to continue to do different, um, I want to just say, different iterations of this, if you will. As, as we wrap up, one of the things that, that uh, I say a lot when, when I talk to students or I go through is you take a look at what's happening in the industry. General Motors' commitment to zero emissions, zero crash, zero congestion, the work we're doing with EVs, uh, and the work we're doing with our autonomous vehicles as we go forward. And part of me, and what I tell the students is, part of me wishes I was a 23-year-old engineer again, to really be starting in on the ground floor for this. And part of me, the, the me that's here says, no, <laughs> you know, because it's going to be exciting, but it's going to be very, very difficult, and it's going to be very, very challenging. So what I would say is for those of you that are interested, if you're interested, in automobiles, please continue to read up on it. It is going to be changing very quickly. You're going to see a lot of news moving forward, not only in electric vehicles and in autonomous vehicles. And I am confident, after having been here for 37 years, that General Motors is going to be leading that. Mm -hmm.